this is your trainer Mohammed Musab. Today we are going to start the Ethernet and its header. So you must have remember from our last classes that we talked about LANs, right? We talked about uh, switches, and I have also mentioned what a protocol is, right? A protocol is nothing but a set of rules, a set of rules that governs the communication of network or the network devices right so these are some of the topics that we have covered till now we have looked upon what a LAN is what are, what are, what are the switches and what are their functions and features yes how they are used now you must also remember the the previous concept of encapsulation right you remember it encapsulation what was that it was something like this that we are getting some data from the user and we are adding a header over it isn't it a header so that we can communicate with the device in this header we are actually putting some information okay the information that will be used to reach the destination information to reach destination right that is the header this same header will then get passed to the next layer and you will see it something like this okay then this layer let's say this is segment now here this layer will add its own header in this case isn't it so all this process of adding up the header all the or the information that is used to reach the destination is called encapsulation okay now what is actually in this header that is what we are going to study here okay so starting from the very low level or very first level let me complete this so we can get an idea what we are talking about and then uh, we are going at the network layer right at network layer the PDU is called a packet isn't it a packet and we have the header here also so here is the header the header of internet layer after that comes the frame right and frame adds its own header this is the frame here and we are going to add a header here alright now we will be starting with the first layer that is the link layer and then we will move on to other layers then to the internet layer and then to the transport layer header we will be covering these three layers only because network engineers don't actually work on the application they work on the network right so in the network most of the problems are faced uh, anywhere from transport layer to internet layer to link layer that's why we are going to study only these three layers and their headers okay now if you are clear let's get let's move ahead all right so what a header is it will look something like this there are different fields in a header okay let's name them what are they called 
the first field is called a preamble okay this is of 7 bytes bytes now let me just pause a little bit here we have 7 bytes and uh, in 7 bytes if we have bytes so in 1 byte we have 8 bits right you know that we have 8 bits in one just one byte so in 7 bytes we will get 56 bits right so in just first field that is the preamble there are 56 bits or 7 bytes okay these are nothing but the alternate zeros and ones so we can write that also alternate zeros and ones okay so one zero one zero one zero one zero this uh, field will be is going to look like something like that all right that is the first point here now second point why we are using this we are using this to synchronize the sender and receiver and receiver okay that is the purpose of uh, implementing this field in the header now you know that let's say we are on a PC here okay and there is a server any server in maybe in our in, in our whole uh, in our own company or maybe outside the network right so when we are on the PC we are working here so we are the ones who are going to send any request right a request will be sent from the PC so PC in this case will be in the active state isn't it since server is not very like a uh, uh, ready to accept anything so we will say that server is in the passive state okay so when something is in passive state we have to tell it that you need to be active you have to become active now since we are going to send some data to you so before actually sending any kind of data we are actually we are actually telling the 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 destination here that be active don't be in the passive state be active and be ready to receive anything that we are going to send all right after that in the second field that was all about the first field here in the second field we have sfd S F D and this is of one byte. Okay. Let me specify the use of this field also. This is also an alternate of bits, uh, zeros and ones, but in this scenario, we are actually looking at it something like this. Okay. So one zero one zero one zero and these double ones will tell the destination. will tell the destination will tell the destination that be ready now be ready to receive now till here we are just synchronizing the sender and receiver and at this point we are telling the device that the next frame is going the next field is going to be your uh, your data field or something that you should pay attention to that's we are telling here okay okay <coughs> okay so the next field that comes up is is the destination destination mac address this sft field here we call it let me state that start frame delimiter 
okay that is used to tell the destination that be ready to receive the data all right now this is the actual thing that uh, is uh, of some use to the destination what's that destination mac address first of all what a mac address is right why do we need that a mac address is actually an address of 48 bits okay that is represented in hexadecimal format this is used to identify a host a device okay this mac address is burned in now i'm going to explain each and everything just uh, for a moment let me write the all the top all the points that i have got uh, uh, regarding the mac address this is burned in by the manufacturer okay and uh, it is globally unique mostly globally unique most of the time okay so now 48 bits the bits are actually the bits are actually presented in this format something like this let me it is all that we have got here I'm gonna explain the system of bits and binaries okay so just be ready for that okay now you must have heard of the decimal system isn't it a decimal system okay so any kind of system any kind of mathematical system is made up of two things first is the place value right and the second is the digits the place value that we got are, uh, are like this in the decimal system we have got the base of 10 okay whenever we raise the power uh, of any number to 0 we get 1 right we raise the power of 10 to 1 we get 10 we raise the power of 10 to 2 we get 100 and this is what we call ones place you remember that ones place tens place right hundreds place and so on and so on thousands place ten thousand place place and there are many uh, many places you can go on and on and on right these were the place values now from there we used to place some digits over those place values isn't it so let me explain what I'm trying to say let's say these are the place values here ones tens hundreds thousands ten thousands okay we have the digits anywhere from nine zero to nine yes let's place some digits here zero four nine one or seven okay we have these place values all right now these two things when get multiplied like this we have got 40,917 isn't it and that is a number here that is a decimal system in the same way uh, if you have understood this thing this is very basic math and you don't need to just remember any of this right what you need to know is this we have got any kind of system or even you can you know create your own system like this you can take any number you can have that uh, uh, that base value and you can raise the power of the of, of that number 
to whatever you want whatever you want as the highest number just allow me a moment binary system okay this is the system that that we mostly uh, use or most not mostly the only system that we use in the computer networking so or the overall computers okay any machine that is working is working on the binary system because it understands the binary right now as the same we have got the decimal system we have also got the binary system the only difference is the place values are made up of is 2 okay now when I raise the power of 2 I will get 1 when I raise to the power of 1 I'll get 2 when I raise it to the power 2 I'll get 4 when I raise it to the power 3 I'll get 8 isn't it this raising of power is nothing this raising of power is nothing but it means that we are actually multiplying the number if we are raising it to the uh, to the power of 2 it means that we are multiplying it number 2 times if we are raising it to the power 3 it means that we are multiplying it by 3 times if we are raising it to the power of 4 it means that we are multiplying it 4 times isn't it that is a very simple or very basic math okay now we don't need to even remember this what you need to know is the next step that I am going to show you I am actually trying to make the concept easier here by uh, making us understand the binary system behind the scenes so any raise 2 raised to the power 0 is 1 2 raised to the power 1 is 2 so that if you ever forget which you will not but if you somehow forget the, the system here you can create it very easily ok so <coughs> now let's take this here so we have got the digits 1 2 4 8 6 not the digits I am sorry place values 16 okay and then uh, 32 excuse me 32 64 128 okay these are the place values that we have got in the binary system we can, you can also go on but we, w we don't need to go on and on because we just have the use of 8 bits here alright these place values are then multiplied by digits right what are the digits in the binary system there are just two digits zeros and ones there are no other digits than zeros and ones in the binary system meanwhile in the decimal system we have anywhere from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and those digits are used for creating a value I'm going to place some values here some digits that I mentioned okay something like that now same that the, th the thing that we were doing in the uh, decimal system I'm going to multiply them okay and the answer will be something like this 128 plus 8 plus 2 because I am just adding the ones that we are getting and not the zeros because 0 multiplied by, multiplied by any number is obviously 0 isn't it 0 multiplied by 32 is 0 so 1 multiplied by 1, 128 is equals to 128 8 multiplied by 1 is 8 something like this we are getting here now if I add this I will get 138 ok so I will write that 138 is the decimal uh, presentation of the binary 1 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 ok is that clear if you have any questions regarding this we can have this session 1 to 1 it is very important to understand this kind of things because these are the basics of the uh, overall IP addressing and the subnetting ok if you are not getting any of this 
प्लीज लेट मी नो एंड वी विल हैव अ कन्वर्सेशन वी विल हैव अ क्लास वन टू वन क्लास सो दैट वी विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड ईच एंड एवरी थिंग दैट आई एम डिस्कसिंग एयर ओके नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन All right. Thanks for waiting. Let's move ahead. Now, as I as I already mentioned, we have got the binary system here, right? I'm going to write it down again so that you can understand what a MAC address is and how it is made up of. I just need four bits here, okay? Four bits and their place values. These four bits are the building blocks of a MAC address or any hexadecimal system. Okay, from these four bits, I can go on from zero to fifteen. Let me specify you how. Okay. Let's take the bits or the four bits here, all to zero. Okay. So I'm taking it as the first case, zero, 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 zero. It will give you an answer of zero, right? Because all the place values multiplied by zero will be zero. Yes. What are the place values here that I'm talking about? The place values are eight, four, two, one. Okay. Now let me just increase one number here. One. It means one. Again, it means two, because I'm uh, taking the zero here and two one. Two one divided by one is two, right? Now, in order to make three, I need to make sure that all the all the two bits are on. I'll make it three. Okay, and you can go on and on, and you will end up at the last, very last digit. That is fifteen. Yes, one plus two is three. Three plus four is seven, and seven plus eight is fifteen. So you you have the you have got the hexadecimal system here. This is how hexadecimal is made up of. Now we don't really specify the uh, hexadecimal in these bits. Okay, do we specify in something like this? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Eight and nine. Now after nine, we will start from A, B, C, D, E, and F. This A represents ten. This B represents eleven. It represents twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Okay. This representation is just another form that we are getting from the binary here. So all the binary system, all the hexadecimal system is behind the scene working on the binaries only. I hope you are getting the point. If you are not, just let me know and we will discuss it. Okay? It is very important to know. Now, a MAC address is forty-eight bits of hexadecimal format. Okay? Now I can choose anything from this zero to F range and I can make a hexadecimal here. How? Let let us do this. Let me raise the the overall paintings here that I've got. Allow me a moment, please. All right. We are talking hexadecimal now. Okay. So forty eight bits are represented in this format. Something in this format. I have zero one colon a b. Colon four five colon 
एफ एफ कॉलन नाइन जीरो कॉलन वन ए ओके दिस आर गोइंग टू बी फोर्टी एट बिट्स हाउ दिस जीरो इज मेड अप ऑफ फोर बिट्स लेट मी डू दैट बाय अनदर कलर सो इट इज क्लियर टू यू दिस दिस फोर इज मेड अप ऑफ फोर बिट्स दिस वन इज अगेन मेड अप ऑफ फोर बिट्स दिस ए इज मेड अप ऑफ अगेन फोर बिट्स बाय डूइंग समथिंग लाइक दिस एट एंड टू वी आर एडिंग एट एंड टू हेयर एंड वी आर गेटिंग टेन एंड टेन इज रिप्रजेंटेड बाई ए इन हेक्साइटिसमल बी इज बींग फॉर्म्ड समथिंग लाइक दिस ओके फोर जीरो वन जीरो जीरो फाइव जीरो वन जीरो वन ओके एंड सो वन एंड सो वन एफ विल बी प्रजेंटेड इन दिस फॉर्मेट ऑल वंस एंड यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट वॉट वी आर ट्राइंग टू डू हेयर राइट यू हैव गॉट द आइडिया हाउ मैक एड्रेस इज बींग फॉर्म डेयर नाउ दीज दीज आर फोर बिट्स दीज आर फोर बिट्स फोर प्लस फोर आर सिक्सटीन राइट फोर एंड फोर अगेन सिक्सटीन दिस विल मेक ट्वेंटी फोर ओके एक्सक्यूज मी थर्टी टू ओके दीज आर दिक्सटीन बिट्स है दीज आर अगेन गोइंग टू बी सिक्सटीन 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 और राइट सो दिस इज हाउ आर मैक एक्सरसाइजिमल फॉर्मेट इज वर्किंग फॉर द मैक एड्रेस ओके दे आर थर्टी टू बिट्स एंड वी रिप्रजेंट इट इन हेक्साडाइसिमल फॉर्मेट नाउ दिस डेस्टिनेशन मैक एड्रेस इज पुट फॉर पुट फर्स्ट हेयर आर राइट आर यू गेटिंग दिस इफ यू आर नॉट अगेन आई एम सेंग दैट प्लीज लेट मी नो एंड वी विल डिस्कस इट ओके all these things are very important because the header overall is very important to know so in the same way that we have got a, a destination mac address we have also got a source mac address source mac address all right in this in this uh, in this mac address there are two fields that i am going to show to you ओके सिंस देर इज अ मैक एड्रेस ऑन ईच एंड एवरी डिवाइस दैट वी आर सींग ऑन द इंटरनेट एवरी डिवाइस दैट कैन कम्युनिकेट दैट कैन सेंड डेटा इज यूजिंग अ मैक एड्रेस विदाउट मैक एड्रेस देर विल बी नो कम्युनिकेशन ओके सो यू कैन से योर मोबाइल फोन्स योर लैपटॉप्स पीसीज Uh, IP phones, cameras, all that is working on a MAC address. If a device has no MAC address, it cannot communicate anyhow. Okay. No, the the MAC address can be divided in two formats. Two. Let's see. These are twenty-four bits, and these are twenty-four bits. You will add up. They will make forty-eight bits. Okay. Now, this 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 particular part here is called OUI, which means organizationally unique identifier. Okay. It means that let's say there is a company HP or there is a company Dell. okay so uh, each and every product that is being manufactured by the hp uh, by the company hp and dell will be purchasing this format from my standard company let's say ieee okay an organization that will provide the hp or dell with this part and these 24 bits will be in the hands of vendor in other words the company that is manufacturing the device hp or dell so hp or dell or any other vendor has no access or no rights to change this format here 01ab45 now this is not fixed i am just taking an example but you will 
you will understand that 24 bits cannot be changed by any company they have to be purchased from a higher authority and they will provide uh, they will provide many of these to the company according to according to the need obviously okay and the other 24 bits are then in the hands of the of the vendor or the company the hp or dell or whatever the company is making these laptops that can that company can change the uh, these 24 bits and it will use it to produce their uh, devices all right the, this was a, a a little bit of important thing here so this will be find in the destination mac address also and the source mac address also okay shall we move on just allow me a minute to erase that all right let's move on to the next fields here in the next field we will see type okay this type is of two bytes and what is specified in the type the type field actually tells about the protocol being used at upper layer okay this is the functionality of the type field here after that we see a field payload now payload is nothing but the data that it is getting from the upper layer you know you have you we have, since we are working on the frame and the frame header so frame is a pdu at link layer right at link layer above it is the internet layer isn't it so uh, data being that is processed by the internet layer and that is transferred to the frame is in the payload so payload will include all the data plus the header of the internet also in this payload okay that is the meaning of payload you have all the data that you are getting from the upper layer all right now what is the next field by the way this payload can range anywhere from it can range anywhere from uh, 46 bytes to 1500 or even uh, 46 bytes to 1500 excuse me 46 to 1500 bytes okay uh, anyways uh, I have mentioned that there are 48 bits so these bits will be in six bytes also okay six bytes as i mentioned one byte equals eight bits yes one bytes equal eight bits and then six byte equals 48 bits isn't it so that's why 48 bits can be represented in six bytes okay all right this is the payload here now we are left with one more field and that is something the frame adds behind the data okay behind the data and that is a trailer a trailer what is contained in the trailer is nothing but a cfc that is excuse me FCS the field here is FCS which means frame check sequence all right this is the FCS here now what is the functionality of an FCS? An FCS is used for error detection of what? Of data. 
this header also and the data that is being transferred from the upper layer that it has received from the upper layer is error uh, is uh, you know error rectified uh, by the by this field here fcs frame check sequence and it uses a mechanism especially for this and that is crc okay what crc is it means cyclic redundancy check all right crc is the mechanism that is being used at the fcs now this is uh, this is of uh, four bytes okay so if you add all this if you add all this header in uh, just excluding this payload here we have four bytes two bytes is six bytes okay six and six is 80 just let me down here so we have got these seven bytes after that one byte after that six six bytes of mac addresses six bytes of source addresses two bytes of uh, your type here okay and then your payload and then the four bytes of fcs okay if you add it up what you will get is eight plus six is uh, 14 14 plus six is 20 20 plus 2 is 22 and 26 so 26 byte is just the uh, just the size of the header here without the payload okay we are not including the payload here so that is the uh, size of the or size of your whole packet excuse me frame I hope you are getting this right all right now this is important you should take no note of it and you should discuss it with me if you're not understanding it all right so every layer that we are going to discuss we will discuss uh, something about uh, the header that is being used at that layer and it is very important to, to know what is inside that header so that we can understand what information is being transferred from one device to another that is the whole networking isn't it okay so let's move on now there are some some more topics some basic topics and that is modes of communication all right device can communicate in two or three modes and it depends what kind of duplex we are using duplex means that you have a uh, you know control over the devices and you can say let's say for example there are two devices okay these two devices are connected with each other let's say this is switch one and this is switch two okay now when switch one is going to transfer the data let me take another color right that will look much better when this switch is going to transfer the data switch one to switch two okay so there are two things that can happen either switch two will just listen just listen of what switch one is saying or respond also respond also at the same time uh, the moment switch one is transferring some data switch two can send some reply also right this uh, these two things are justified or are classified in two modes and that is half and full when two devices are communicating in such a way that only one device is uh, allowed to transfer at a time and the second device is just allowed to listen to the data that is receiving from another another device this kind of uh, communication is known as half duplex communication so there will be no back way data at the same time at least when switch one is trying to uh, send some data to switch two if switch two sends this data if it tries to send this data there will be congestion in the network neither switch one nor switch two will be able to receive the data okay because they will collide the data will collide 
and that's why that's why we have full communication nowadays because there used to be a lot of collision a lot of congestion in the network back days in the back days so now what we have done is we have shifted a whole network in the full duplex mode and it is nothing but the advanced version of this half duplex where where any device switch to switch one and they can communicate they can communicate with each other at the same time and this is called the full duplex okay that is the full duplex communication here all right these are the two two modes of communication now there is also an auto mode but that is also uh, will take effect in one of these two modes okay in when 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 we device when we configure any device in auto mode it means that it will listen to what uh, other device is uh, being say, is saying okay, let's say if uh, we we are uh, you know configuring switch 1 in auto mode then it will listen to switch 2 if switch 2 is in or in this uh, uh, full duplex okay this switch 1 will also move to the full duplex so it will move to full duplex when it is in auto mode in auto mode also as i mentioned only two results are possible either the device will go to the half duplex or the full duplex okay so in this case auto the auto mode will be uh, will, will be used here since uh, this device is configured in the auto mode okay and that is the modes of communication here if there are any questions in this you can ask me after this we are going to take a look at the frame switching okay and that is also a very important topic here since it is important uh, I would like you to uh, you know take some time and uh, we can have a meeting tomorrow if you are available that would be much better because I can get the uh, questions from your side uh, at the moment so that we can discuss on that and we can have a, a very con deep conversation uh, where we will understand what and how the devices are transferring the data okay how they are communicating how the switch works in a LAN so that would be more comfortable and more easy to understand when you are here if uh, if you're not that is not a uh, big issue but please uh, try to uh, you know have this uh, have this class in the online mode so that uh, we can discuss on what we are uh, doing and what, what whatever we are actually doing behind the scenes as a network engineer okay so we will start with the frame switching from uh, next class till then if you have any questions anything just let me know